Hello friends, welcome to the Zotacad tutorial and here we are going to learn some useful functions you can apply in title blocks, such as attributes and fields in texts. Let's start. This is the file we will use in this video and here you can see the title block from my tutorial how to create a simple title block. Please find the link in the description of this video in case you want to watch it first. Now, the main topics we will focus here are attributes and fields in texts. The first thing I'm going to do is exploding the title block because it's a block object and then I can manipulate the objects inside separately. The next thing, this is not mandatory but helpful to have the things more organized. Let's create a new text style and for that purpose I click on this icon at the annotate tab. Go to new. Type a name easy for you to recognize that's for title blocks. And then I can change the font name to Bachenskrift, <laughs> sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this, and set a fixed height of 2 mm. Then this checkbox that says annotative, I don't have to tick it, because my intention is only to create texts within this style in the paper space. Now let's start defining attributes here. Basically, attributes are tags that I add to a block and later for each project that I need to use this title block, I can edit its specific information. Next thing, I'm going to add some extra lines in order to have all the tags well aligned. With the command of set, I will copy this line 10 mm below and then do the same for this one at the project name. After, I select this line to offset, but now for the distance I put 5 and place 2 lines. Then repeat the same for the box below. Ah, and for the 3 lines where I have drawn scale and date. Then, let's select everything that I have just drawn and change to a different color, as I want to distinguish these lines from the other ones. Finally, create two vertical lines here, so I can put the tags at the intersections. Ok, let's add the first attribute. I have to go to the block panel, click on the arrow below, and then on Define Attributes. Let's create an attribute for the first line of the project name and address. The first one is the tag, and it's just the text shown when I place the attribute. It's not very important what you type, and two or three characters are enough, and yes, no spaces are allowed. Below, I have to type the prompt for the attribute. In this case, I'm going to type company name. In default, it's the information shown by default when you insert a title block in your project. You can type text here, or in this case, I'm going to add dash lines, so I know that I have to fill with text here in this blank. In the panel below, I can edit the justification or the text style. In this case, they are correct, so I can click OK and close. Now I'm going to add the attribute here in this intersection, so now you can see why I draw the lines before. Now this is also in violet color because I forgot to change the color to properties before creating the attribute. To add the other tags, you can repeat the process. Define attributes and edit each parameter. Ah, and this exercise, it is just an example. The blanks I'm filling are just hypothetical, 
So I encourage you to edit these attributes in a way that makes sense to your projects. Now I want to show you a little trick to add your attributes faster. You can simply copy an attribute, place it in all the places, and then double click in one of them, edit the values for this specific case, and then do the same for the others. Hmm, the attributes on scale and date, I don't need them, because I'm going to do a different thing. Ah, and then, these three prompts below, I can actually align them at the lines. The problem is, when I click on this text, you can see the grip at the top. And do you know why? Because these are multi-line texts, and we move them from the top left corner. However, there is a simple fix. If I explode each multi-line text, they automatically convert to a single line text. And after, I can easily align each of them to the lines. Next. I don't need the support lines anymore. So I'm going to select them all. Then, I can erase them all. Ok, but you never know, I might need them later, so instead, let's create a new layer, called support lines for example, and then move the lines to this new layer, here. Finally, you can turn the layer off by clicking on the light. Ok. Now it's time to create a block with attributes, but just move the viewport a bit to the left to be easier to select the objects. Let's click on create a block. Then for the name, type the block with attributes, seems good. Click on OK. Then I'm going to select the base point. And now this is the important part. When it's time to select the objects, we shouldn't just select everything together. In my opinion, in my opinion, the best is to select the attributes first and they have to be in the order that you want them in the list. Then I can select all the remaining and press enter. Ok, as you can see, the block is done. But this time this window appeared and I'm asked to edit the attributes as I want and look that the default values are the dashed lines that I have specified before. As an example, let's change just the company name to Cutting Black and as you can see it updates automatically in the block. Then if later you double click in the block the Enhanced Attribute Editor show up in the screen and I can edit the values when I want. Let's go back. You can press Ctrl Z a couple of times to the point before creating the block. And now I want to show you another useful feature we can add to our title blocks. Fields in Texts. The empty blanks for the scale and date Instead of an attribute, I will make a single line text with a field. Hmm, and after all, I need again the support lines, and it was a good thing that I haven't deleted them. Go to the Annotate tab. Click on this arrow and then in Single Line Text. My text style is fine as title block. Now I just need to click on this intersection, and as my height is fixed as 3mm, I only need to set a direction, which is horizontal. Now, to insert a field, I have to go with the pointer here, right click, and choose Select Field. Now, in this window, I'm going to choose the category Objects. 
on field names, I click on object and then on this button to select the object that I want to calculate the scale, which is the viewport. I select it and then back in the window, I need the custom scale as the property. Then at the right, I can see here the preview of my result and select one of the formats available here. Close the window and as you can see, the scale is automatically placed in the text, one per two, the scale of the viewport. <laughs> yes, that's true, we cannot see any objects there. But let's suppose we copy this floor plan available in one of the sample files, here in copy from the clipboard, and I paste it, it can be as a block, then I specify the insertion point as the origin. I type 0, press tab, 0 again, press enter. Then I double click in the viewport, use the command zoom, and then A for all. Nice, now you can see all the drawing, but I have messed up the scale. So let's choose 1 per 50. And now the value in the field updates, even usually not automatically. Sometimes you have to switch windows or go to the model space and come back. Or zoom in or zoom out like what I just did. Aha, now you can see 1 per 50. Finally, for the date, let's add another text. I do exactly the same as before. And when I go to insert field, this time I need to switch this tab to date and time and there are four options here. What date am... because what date am I going to show? Yes, so the first option shows the date I created this file. In this case, the date of yesterday. The second option, date, is the date right now and it will never change. If you choose plot date, this one I think is very useful. It only appears when you print the file. The last one is the date of the last time you saved this drawing. Then you have all these data formats to choose from. So I click on OK and close. In conclusion, in this video I explained to you some of the functions you can add to title blocks, which I find them quite useful. A final note, fields are still able to update their values when they are part of a block. So feel free to create a block with everything here, but don't forget to select the attributes ordered from top to bottom. So it was everything for today, but this time before leaving, I want to mention that I just started a page on Patreon for Kevin Black. There, you can support this channel to help me keep creating more content here. I would really appreciate that. Even of course, I'm already grateful that you find these videos available and that they are helping you to speed up your knowledge. Without your support, nothing of this would be possible. So, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.